we start today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms that the set was experiencing. Uh, these were taken yesterday. The first clip is the ringing slash buzzing sound that we had from the CRT, which resulted in flashes on the screen itself and partial collapse of the field, uh, which would then come back and be sort of relatively okay again. The second clip is after I'd turned down the G2 preset, and the third clip just shows the uh, lack of field sync, but also shows the fact that the screen is no longer cutting out, or the picture is no longer cutting out, which it was before that G2 pot was adjusted. Good afternoon and welcome to today's video. So today we're taking a look at this Solavox 16R19-1 16 inch television set. Uh, doing a bit of digging, the set is a rebadge of the ITT Ideal Colour 3226. Um, so symptoms of the problems of this set which I took a look at yesterday and I think I've managed to diagnose is there was a rather nasty popping sound coming from the tube. Now I found that the G2 control was way up so it was very very high. Um, lowering the control, uh, lowering the preset rather, did seem to reduce the amount of popping to, well nothing actually, there's no popping at all now so that has actually resolved that particular problem. The other problem is there's no synchronization on either horizontal or vertical. The field hasn't collapsed and you can still adjust the width pot and the height pot to actually give you um, width and height adjustment, but there's no synchronization. So a bit of history about this particular TV. Um, it has been to uh, a professional repairer who has, at during the sort of course of investigations, replaced the line output transformer, which is this item here. Um, don't worry, I have discharged the tube. I put the cover on before starting filming, mainly uh, so I can show you how it comes off. But the tube has been discharged using the standard approach of a screwdriver underneath here and a crocodile clip onto this little band here. So don't worry, the tube has been discharged. There's no voltage left in the tube. However, there is a bleed resistor fitted, uh, I believe in the anode cap, which is actually quite new. So as soon as the set is turned off, the tube should discharge anyway. But never take that as a um, dead sign or dead cert that the tube is discharged. Always discharge it properly from your first anode cap. Now, other problems that the set seems to be exhibiting is this lack of sync. And I do not have, unfortunately, a circuit diagram for this chassis. If I can find out uh, what chassis it is, I should be able to get one. So the first thing I'm going to do is to grab some photos of some of the important markings which may give me an idea. So we've got this one here, but that's only just the model number unfortunately, so we may not get anything from that, but we can certainly try. That's the Solavox model number, incidentally. This here is the tube type, and the tube in this 
is a 420 GJB22 TC01, which from doing a bit of Googling and investigation is actually a Toshiba tube and has a number of patents specifically for this very small electron gun assembly. I mean, look at that, it's tiny. There's uh, three guns in there, but it is really tiny. If you take the neck board off, which I'll do carefully now, look at that. For a colour set, that's a tiny little connector. So I would guess that we have red, green and blue. We also have one for uh, well, probably a couple for the heaters. They may actually be sharing a common earth, which is why it's probably got so few pins. Now, I have bought a universal adapter for my BK tester. So, hopefully, uh, if I can get the pinouts for these, which I should be able to find online, hopefully, um, with luck, I should be able to check the condition of the tube. Um, further signs that it's made in Japan... There's a big 84 mark on this, which suggests to me that this set was probably built around 1984. Uh, the Made in Japan is probably because it's a Toshiba tube. Uh, is there anything else? Ah! On the speaker we have 081485, uh, which is an ITT sticker. So that is August the 14th, 1985. So we have an approximate build date for the set of around 1984-85. Um, the owner of the set advised that it was bought at some point in 1987, possibly, uh, judging by a Comet catalogue that he managed to find, which I suppose would make sense if it's been hanging around for a couple of years. It may have been in one of their sort of more bargain basement lines. <sighs> so... Chip-wise, this particular chip here, which I'm just focusing in on, there, this TDA2579 is, I believe, the field synchronization chip. And when this line output transformer failed, it's very likely that it arced over and killed that chip. So probably one of the things I'm going to be doing is replacing that chip, but also checking the value of these resistors and capacitors which surround it. I discovered yesterday that this pot here adjusts horizontal. This pot up here, I think, does vertical. Now, thankfully, if I could get the chassis out, which uh, when I come to repair this properly, I will, there are some markings against the pots which tell you what they do. So that should give us a better idea of what we need to adjust once we've replaced that particular chip. Um, further up we've got a chroma ramp preset, FHT frequency, not sure what that is. Um, and a few other pots on the board which we can certainly adjust out. Now, the one I adjusted yesterday is this one here on the neck board, and that adjusts the G2 voltage, so grid 2. A few more here, which are for each of the colours, so red, green and blue, and there's a couple here, I'm not too sure what they do, so I haven't touched those. But for me, the big obvious one is this one here, which looks like the grid uh, 2 preset. Now... What I discovered is when I turned the, the unit on, you were getting a lot of um, buzzing noises and popping noises coming from the tube, sort of internally. And the previous engineer said that there was a short between two of the grids. However, it seems that the set has all of its colours, so I'm not certain if there is a short. There is um, possibly a way we can try to remove the short by tipping the tube up onto its face and gently tapping around here with a screwdriver which should dislodge uh, any cathode material that's got caught between the two grids. To be honest, I'd rather wait for my universal adapter and use the BK tester to clear the short, which is definitely the safer 
more um, practical, safer approach. One thing I will be doing also is giving this whole board a clean because there is a lot of dust on there, so giving that a bit of a clean. There has been some repairs in here before. Uh, on the 10th of the 8th, 2004, repairs to the frame circuit and general tidy of the print. So this isn't the set's first uh, repair and uh, for a set of this age it's not unexpected but uh, the back has been off a few times during its life. Um, however, to have the back off only a few times during its life and given that its life is over 30 years, I think that's pretty good. So we'll just put this neck board back on. There we go. So certainly the next step is going to be to replace this frame IC because the symptoms that we're getting do seem to be very um, very reminiscent of a uh, frame fault, uh, frame synchronization fault. Anyway, I think we've talked about the set enough. Um, stay tuned for the second part, which I'll be doing once I've received that chip. But if you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.